What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to download a regular file from the web and it's a little bit different than just a an image file. To be honest, it's a little bit more complex but definitely useful. So, before we get started, I want to show you guys one other thing. You know how whenever we were importing modules before, I just put import and then the name of the module? Well, I'll show you guys um something else that you might see. If you ever see from in something like this, Oh, take it easy there, caps lock. Import. This is a different way that you can import, and I'll explain in detail what exactly that means whenever I talk about classes and more about modules later on. But I just want to get you guys familiar with the syntax right now so you guys aren't confused. If you ever see this, it's just um, a different way that you can import modules. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to download a CSV file and you can actually use the same technique whenever you're downloading text file but there aren't that many text files just floating around the internet so a CSV file is of course just a comma separated value file just like a text file but things are separated with commas so if you go to finance.yahoo.com type in the ticker of any uh, company if you don't know one GOOG will give you a uh, stock information about Google and whenever you go to a company's um, little financial page, on the left hand side, they have. Hold on a second. Got an itch in my ear. Alright. On the left hand side, they have historical prices. So if you click that, it's going to give you just a bunch of their prices in history. And again, you can find any CSV file. This is just a one that I remember is free. So. At the bottom of the page, you're going to see this link that says download to spreadsheet. And don't click it or else it's going to download the CSV file right to your computer. Um, right click it and hit copy link address. And if I paste it in there, you can see that this is indeed a link to a CSV file. So make sure that you have that copied in your clipboard. And that's the file that we're going to download. Again, if you uh, know of any other CSV file, um, feel free to use that but I know that Yahoo has a bunch for free so you can use that so of course instead of having to work with that long honk and tonk and thing every time what I want to do is I'm gonna save all of that in a variable called goog URL so right now we can just use this variable a lot cleaner if you ask me so now that we have a URL of a file that we don't want to download we need to make a function to of course download crap from that URL so I'm just gonna name my function download um, stock data and the parameter we pass it in is just CSV URL so the URL of some CSV file on the internet alright simple enough so far so now what we need to do is we need to tell our Python program to connect to the internet first so what we're going to be doing is calling a function but it's easier if you store it in um, a variable called a response so this is pretty much think of it as your connection to a web page so we already know how to do this request dot url see if it's there URL. I guess I might as well type it there it is url open and what this function does is the only parameter that it takes or that we're going to be passing in is the URL of a CSV file on the internet. Again, it's the URL of any web page, but it goes to that URL and then it's going to store the connection to that web page in this variable right here, response. So now that we have that response, we can do something cool with it. And I'll show you guys this. Make another variable, call it CSV or whatever you want, and take that response and call a function on it called read. Now what this is going to do is it's going to read the data from whatever URL you're pointing to. So right now we're reading in all of the data which is that huge which is pretty much the entire text that's in that file and now we have that text stored in a variable called CSV. So what I want to do now is since we have all that data stored in a variable called CSV I don't know if that's string data or maybe it's numerical data maybe it's date data I want to guarantee that that data that we just read in is a string so then we won't have any problems later on so what I can do in that case is put CSV underscore str 
and remember that function str right there well this takes anything inside here and converts it to a string and I think we did it with numbers whenever we were trying to print out numbers and strings together so anyways whatever data you read from this file it's going to convert it to a string and then it's going to store that in the variable csv underscore string so now we can use this wherever we would use a string to print it out whatever we want to do with it however I'm going to show you guys how to take it and save it to an appropriate file on your computer so right now we took all that data and it's in one long string like this one big line however if we ever read that in a file of course it's going to be kind of confusing so what we want to do is we want to take it and break it up in lines since if we looked at this we don't want all of these numbers and dates on the same line we want each of these on a new line whenever we make the file so to do that the first thing you need is a variable called lines and set it equal to this CSV actually you can just copy this set it equal to your string and call a function called split and in between quotes put this symbol right here now what split does is it basically takes a string a huge long string and it breaks it up now how does it know where to break it up does it break it up every 10 characters hold on sound like someone was at my freaking door which is weird because it is almost 1 a.m. so uh hope my door is locked but anyways it takes a long string and it breaks it up whenever it comes across this new character so instead of having everything on the same line we're gonna go line by line and it's a lot easier to work with whenever we're making our file so of course what we need to do now is just the stuff we learned before we need to save it somewhere on our computer well we're not gonna be like hey we downloaded crap just spin a big roulette wheel on my hard drive and save it somewhere randomly no so let's go ahead and tell our computer where um, we actually want to save it so I'll save this to a file named um, goog.csv now again remember I think I talked to you guys about this in like the first or no it, was, it must have been like the third tutorial whenever you're working with file pass it's always good to have R before it that means raw and that means that you can type a file like this type something like this see um, like a uh, Bucky, whatever, and you don't have to escape every character. So even though I'm just using the file name with a simple extension, I always like to put everything inside a raw string. Just makes good practice, I guess. So now we said where we want to save it. Now we can use our file objects to read and write from it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open up this file so we can actually write to it so the first thing it needs is says okay what file do you want to open well that one and what do you want to do to it well since we're taking that data and writing to it or creating it of course W that's what we learned in the last tutorial so now that we have a file open and we can write to it what we want to do is we pretty much want to loop through what we just downloaded and print it on the file so the first thing we need is a for loop and what you do is you put four line and lines and basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through this string and for each individual line well, I'll show you guys what we're gonna do to it right now what we're gonna do is take the file that we just opened and we're gonna write to it so remember each line which is each chunk it broke off gets treated as line that's what we told it to do right there so we're gonna print the line to the file and then after each one we we'll just print a new line and that'll kick it down to a new line make it real nice and beautiful looking so again we said this is what what we want to download connect save it as a string make a file on our computer write to the file the only other thing that we have to do is close this our file object just so we don't waste any memory on our computer and then we need to call this function right here 
So to call it, download stock data, and the URL that we're passing in is, of course, Goog URL. So again, take note that on the left-hand side, I deleted all the other files that we didn't need from the last tutorials. So right now, I only have main and tuna. Now, whenever I run this, I now got this new file, goog.csv. And if I double click this to open it, ho, 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 look at that information. So now we can take this information and, you know, pretty much make the perfect algorithm to make us a perfect stock market trader. So again, if you just, you know, try to copy all of this and use your little crappy calculator to try to figure out, you know, the best time to sell stocks, it's going to be confusing. But now, in a few lines of code, we can download the historical data for any company in history, and we can analyze it and make the perfect program to take over the world. So we're going to be taking over the world in a couple tutorials, not right away. So that's what you have to look forward to. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and well, smell you guys later.